I'm making this video the concerns of a three phase rotary converter that I, I needed to build. I need to build this one because the reason is I got this six horsepower uh, blower, it's a vacuum generator. And it's three phase and in this building I have I don't have three phase power so I need to make three phase power so I did some research I figured out well yeah you got to buy a three phase motor to use as a idler and I did I got this 15 horsepower uh, 10 inch flywheel so to kind of match it I bought this 10 inch pulley for the uh, the pony to drag the big motor. But the reason why I'm doing this video right now is because I wanted to show you the electrical. All right, here's my electric coming in. It's my circuit box. That's a 60 amp. So the main power cord comes in here and I bought this old fuse box. This is just off of somebody's old house that had a whole row of, of switch breakers down in here. And I tore it apart and I kind of uh, adjusted it to what I need. But I, I need to show you. So, you know, 240 volt service, you get two, two hots, right? You get two hots. So that's what comes in here. And just like the original panel, this is, this is the original. This is a 100 amp breaker here. So this is basically my, gonna be my on off switch for the whole thing. What I did is I is I tore it apart and I bent and twisted and I bought these uh, bus bars so that now my two leads are going to come down to these two bus bars. These two bus bars. Right? And so the, the whole key of making a three-phase rotary converter is to send two of those to your big-ass idler motor. Here is our three phases, technically. This is coming back. The red one comes back from the motor. The black and the white are going to the motor. That's going to the 15 horsepower motor. But I want to show you now because it's kind of bare and you can get a better idea of what's going on. So, so our black and white coming in come down these bus bars. So now these also need to go back out to the motor, to, to my big blower motor, vacuum generator. And I got this down here. I got a, it's a 50 amp dryer plug that's going to, this is all six gauge wire that I'm using here. So coming back from the motor is this red lead, which comes down to this bus bar. And that, that's going to go directly out. So now I got three phases, three phases that are going out. Now the reason why I got, okay. I got these big ass bus bars is because I, I need capacitors. Some people say you can you could do a three phase motor without any capacitors, um, but no, I don't I don't agree with that. And and this is the whole reason for my video right now is because I need to balance the system. I've already done some testing. I've had this thing up and running, and it, the whole thing works great. My voltages aren't perfect yet. I'm still going to dial it in. This is the thing that I wanted to to post to you guys uh, so that maybe it could take a little bit of mystery out of it because bouncing run capacitors typically just to run your idler motor here's what I here's what I found uh, searching is that they say you need anywhere from 12 microfarads to 16 microfarads per horsepower now I got a 15 horsepower motor so I calculate that out so it comes out to 180 microfarads up to 240 now my question originally was, well, how in the world do you hook these up? Is, do you put 180 all on one side? Uh, or do you split it? If you split it, what we would have two times 90 on each side. And that's, I saw a couple of other videos, and, and most people had the capacitor split like this. So, and I wasn't sure if the 180 should be Doubled at 180 per side. I didn't know which would be 360 versus 480. So I just want to give you a quick little paper there. So we're getting 240 in. What we want to send here is to, is actually a 5% increase or or 0.05, 1.05% increase. The reason to use capacitors between A and C and B and C is that you want the voltage to be increased 
but you actually want to send, and it's it's either five percent. No, I just found another guy that says it should be eight per eight percent. So it's either two hundred and fifty-two volts to two hundred and fifty-nine volts, and that's what we want. That's what we want to end up over here. That when we put a meter between A and C, we want it to be. 252 volts, and when we put the same meter between B and C, we need 252 to 259. And I'll show you because those, the, the especially between B and C, I put the I put 100 uh, microfarads on there, and it, boom, it was shooting right up to 252. So I'm I'm good on that side. And no, the the big problem is that A and C is still lagging. I'm still down about 200 and actually 35 volts. So I don't know whether to add resistance or, or remove it. And there's two different things you need to do. You need to balance the voltages, and then you also, uh, if you really want to get crazy, you can do power correction. So I'm going to do both of those things. So I got a bunch of capacitors, a 50 uh, microfarad, 50, I got five of them. So I got 250 microfarads there. That's, I bought some 15s to try and, uh, to try and uh, balance it up and down. And I realized I'm still going to need even more than that. I got five 15s. Then I bought I bought a box of eight 20s. And I did. Per I went out and purchased this. It's a capacitance meter, 20 bucks. So I wanted to show you it now before I'm kind of done dialing it in because it's going to take a lot of trial and error. That's, there's a lot of factors that comes into play. It, it depends on your your idler motor. Uh, the voltage coming in, the voltage here is, is coming in at 120, so if I went to Harbor Freight and they were giving away free free meters one day, so I went in and I got a, I got a bunch. And plus, uh, another thing you're really going to need when you do power correction, when you do your power correcting, you need to check your amperage, so you're going to need one of these clamp on at least one uh, to, check, to check your in, the, and this is your inline. You want to drop. You want to drop your amperage as low as you can, and you do that by by your capacitors between uh, A and B. I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this A. I'm going to call this B, and I'm going to call the wild leg C. Now, some other people might do it. I don't know. Some people call the wild leg B, and uh, you know, I don't know. But our capacitors, our tuning capacitors, we need a bank of capacitors between A and C. We're also going to need another bank of capacitors between B and C. And, that, and we're going to use that to, to, we need to balance that voltage to make, make it as close as possible. Now for power correction, power factor correction, we're going to use a bank of capacitors between A and B. Eventually we'll put whatever capacitors I come up with, I will put them down in here because it needs to be covered. You, you know, you want them in, you want capacitors in a metal box because uh, technically they can explode. And I wouldn't want to be around one of those puppies when they explode. And also, you got to learn how to d discharge them. In order to get any capacitor, you could use, a lot of people use a screwdriver, just anything with a rubber handle or anything. And you, and you, just, touch, you just touch the leads and, and that discharges them. Oh, did you see that one? Oh, see, that still has... <laughs> and you know what, I never even checked the, um, on, my, on my load. Again, it's a six horsepower. It pulls about 20 amps, so so I can I can turn this puppy on and off. And I got a these are 30 amps right now. So realistically, I could get away with 20 amps in here, and I probably should, and I probably will change those out to 20 because I, you know, you don't want to overstress your motor, and you want to know if that ever happens. Because if if I had like 100 amp circuit breakers in there. I would never know that this thing could be catching on fire. So you always want to have the minimum here. Okay, one thing I just wanted to bring up pertaining to your idler motor is that there's you got a couple of different options and one option is the speed. Uh, this motor runs about 1800 RPM and then the other motors run at 36 or 3800 RPM. Now, some people I've read recommend going with the higher RPM motor and the other piece of information I found out, now the high RPM motors are all what they call two pole motors and some of the lower RPM motors are a four pole motor 
and apparently uh, each each one has an advantage. So this is a low RPM four pole motor, which some people say is a much stabler voltage. Um, if you get a two pole low RPM motor versus a two pole high RPM motor, then in that case the high RPM motor would be a benefit. So I did finally balance the system with the capacitors and uh, got my total numbers. So what it turned out to once you add all these up, it turns out that on this left side, which I call like 1 or A, uh, I have 230 microfarads on that. And on like 2 or like B, I have 140 microfarads. So that gives me a total of, sorry, a total of 370 total. So if we come back over here, like I was pretty much doubling what they call for and you know I'm sure you guys get this I'm not going to no listen your motor is going to be different than mine your voltage in your house is going to be different your legs could be reversed and uh, so what it does is is uh, okay so remember I told you that my target voltage per leg is 252 to 259 so it turns out that my leg A is at 255 which is right in the middle there and my leg B is at 257, which is, which, which is as good as it's going to get. I played around back and forth adding one here or adding one there. And if you change that one, it'll change this voltage. You know, I had, I had two meters running at, at both at the same time, so I could easily see that just I had to stop it and start it all the time. And uh, so once you get those, the voltages balanced, then you target the, the power factor which I don't even know what I got here. These are probably uh, a 20, a 20, and a 50. So I got 90 microfarads for power factors. And I, okay, just to put it in perspective, so once I balanced everything, then I ran it, I ran it with no power factor capacitors at all. And what I came up with was that it was pulling 12.5 uh, amps on like one, and 13 amps on leg two. I, I added a 15 microfarad for power factor, and that brought it down. Leg one, it brought it from 12.5 down to 10.8, and it brought uh, this down from 13 down to 11.5. So I kept adding them, kept adding them, and after I finally got down here to the point again where it starts going back up, my final amperage. Now remember, on, on leg A started at 12.5, I'm down to a 4.9 right now. And then leg B was started off at 13 with nothing, and now it's at a 4.7. And that's, a, that's the lowest I could get it. And still maintaining my voltages. Even changing power factors was changing my voltages, and I did have to play back and forth a little bit with that too. But hey, this is the gist of my video. I, uh, but be careful, man. These capacitors can store charge, and they will, woof, they'll zap you. I don't believe in star capacitors. Well, I believe in them. But uh, for a 15 horsepower, I kind of did the math, and I would need like 1,500 microfarads of capacitance. And then you need a special heavy-duty momentary starter switch or some type of a relay, and then a timer circuit, and then a contactor. And adding all that cost, and I heard the start capacitors, you can burn them out real quick. And I didn't know. I've seen a couple guys with a pony motor start, and I had an extra motor here for free. Well, I've seen other people with small little two or three generators, and they say, oh, you can just, just spin it with your hand and then kick the power on, and it'll, it'll start that baby. Uh, I've seen other guys use like a rope and pull it like a like a chainsaw or a lawnmower and that's what I really tried. I, I wrapped a rope around here and yanked on it as hard as I could and I could not get this thing to start. It wasn't until I got the motor and a pulley, I went motor to the pulley right on the shaft and I had to get the, you got to get this thing up to about 1200 RPMs before it'll actually kick on. Is I got this uh, RPM, it's a, it's a laser it's a laser and uh, LED RPM meter, and you just put a little, you put a little white tag. There's also one down here, but you can't see that. 
this this 10 inch pulley is actually a little larger than this 10 inch because of the depth of the gauge the grooves uh, because this takes a B a type B belt or it could be a type A and this takes a B yeah the pony starts this a little faster now there's a lot of slippage because it takes a lot you know I don't have it super tight so it makes a hell of a noise so the pony motor I just have it plugged in it's just 110 I could I could wire it for 220 but and I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna let it run and get the, the big ass motor up to speed then all I do is I just unplug this from the wall and come over and I flip on this main circuit breaker Am I on there? No, I'm off. so here I'm gonna go ahead here and just do it I'll plug it in right now okay. and it's, it's, it's kind of like on a wobbly If I do that, I gotta put this camera down. And I'm gonna go ahead and unplug. I'm gonna unplug that, and now I'm gonna come over and and hear. So now you can hear how slower that the idler motor is running. Uh, the other thing where that falls off. The other thing I would, well, I have and would recommend is a is a laser thermometer. So that you can check things like this, the uh, temperature of your bearings. Like I can check that bearing, I can check the, this bearing down here, because apparently you don't want to let your idler motor get over, well this motor, and it's designed, I don't want to let it get over 300 degrees. And it's, gosh, after running it, so I can check, so, so I can check the motor, I can also check this back bearing here, if I can get a good angle at any time. I can also check the capacitors because the, apparently when these start to go bad you can uh, this will heat up so you can check your capacitors for temperature. Of course a couple of a couple of standard meters is, is good and helpful and you're going to need at least one of these guys that can measure your amper. And that's fine. That's about it. Good luck in your project. I hope it helps. And while I'm at it, I'm about to shut this down. And the only thing I don't like about this pony motor is that starting clutch in there. Because once it starts to spin down, that clutch actually re-engages. Uh, I guess to get ready for the next time it started. And I don't like the way it, it does shut down. And I'm going to shut her down here now. So I don't know what's doing that. I don't know if it's actually the capacitors, because the capacitors are still hooked up, and they're really not supposed to be that way. But I am going to eventually take them out. I'll probably just put a, a light switch in a box right there.